Good afternoon. We'll go ahead and call to order the regular meeting of May 26, 2010 of the City of Murfreesboro Board of Zoning Appeals. Uh, we need to consider minutes for the regular meeting on April 28, 2010. Those have been included with the agenda materials. Are there any revisions to those minutes? <coughs> if not, those minutes will stand approved as presented. Uh, we'll move on now to new business. Under new business, we have special use permit and variance requests. First application is application Z10026 by Ms. Jennifer Khalifa for Goodwill Industries of Middle Tennessee, Inc., requesting a special use permit in order to operate a temporary mobile recycling center in a commercial highway zone for property located at 710 Memorial Boulevard, as well as an eight-foot variance to the requirement that no receptacle shall exceed 40 feet in length. Mr. Blum, if you'd review that application for us, please. Thank you, Chairman Rogers, and good afternoon, Chairman Rogers and members of the Board of Zoning Appeals. Our first item, as you mentioned, is for 710 Memorial Boulevard. Uh, this item should look very familiar to the Board. Uh, Ms. Khalifa uh, has come before the Board a number of times for this same request. She's uh, asking for the, her annual 12-month uh, renewal for how we classify it as a temporary mobile recycling center. Uh, uh, in layman's terms, her, uh, her, the donation trailer for Goodwill that's located at the shopping center at 710 Memorial Boulevard, uh, which houses the Murfreesboro Athletic Club. Uh, she has gotten permission from the, uh, from the property owner once again to locate there for another year, and she is seeking a special use permit in order to uh, re-up for 12 months. If approved, it would be, from, uh, it would be good from June 1st, 2010 to uh, May 31st of 2011. Uh, the application appears to be in good order and meets the requirements that are set forth in the zoning ordinance. The one uh, item that it does not uh, uh, comply with she has, uh, is she is seeking a variance from, as she has done in, in years past, and that is for the uh, length of the receptacle, which is limited to 40 feet by the zoning ordinance. And uh, the Goodwill donation trailers are your typical size uh, tractor trailer. Uh, which is 48 feet in length, and uh, I'll show you the photograph of the trailer itself. I'm sure these look very familiar to you. These are the same trailers that they use. They have three sites currently that have been approved, and all three sites are on the agenda today. And just to give you, give you an idea of where this is located in the parking lot, it is up towards Memorial Boulevard in front of the shopping center, uh, as you can see, in an area that's, that's not typically uh, uh, used for, for parking uh, or, or normally has a very high volume of parking. So it's actually a really ideal location uh, for that trailer to be located. Plus, it's located over parking spaces and not in the driveway aisle so as not to impede uh, traffic flow. And it does meet the minimum setback requirements in the commercial highway zoning district. Both the variance and the special use permit requests will need to be taken in separate motions. If the special use permit request is approved, staff recommends the following conditions. Uh, the semi-trailer shall not be located within a driveway aisle, and all parts of the semi-trailer shall comply with the minimum 42-foot front setback requirement in the commercial highway zoning district. If you have any questions, I'll be happy to answer them. Uh, Ms. Khalifa is in, in attendance as well, if you have any questions for her. All right, thank you, Mr. Bomley. Any questions for Mr. Bomley? All right, Ms. Cleefe, anything you'd like to add to this application? Thank you. All right, then at this time we'll go ahead and conduct a public hearing. Anyone present wishing to speak for or against this application, if you would please come forward to the podium, state your name and your address and, and any comments that you might have. And seeing none, we'll declare the public hearing closed and open the floor for further comments or motion. Mr. Palami, are we doing two motions on this? Uh, yes, sir, one for the variance and one for the special use permit. Mr. Chairman, with that, I uh, move for approval of the special use permit uh, subject to staff comment. Second. We have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? If not, all in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? All right, we'll move on to the variance request now. I move for the variance request subject to the staff comments. 
Second. Motion and a second. Any further discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? All right. Uh, Ms. Khalifa, those have both passed for the memorial location. <clears throat> we will now move to application Z10027 by Ms. Jennifer Khalifa for Goodwill Industries of Middle Tennessee requesting a special use permit in order to operate a temporary mobile recycling center in a commercial highway zone. And this is for property located at 1825 Old Fort Parkway, as well as the eight foot variance to the requirement that no receptacle shall exceed 40 feet in length. Mr. Blumley. Thank you, Chairman Rogers. Uh, this is another site that Goodwill has operated for a number of years, and they're coming back uh, before you for their annual 12-month renewal, as well as the same variance for the, uh, for the length of the trailer. Uh, this property is located at 1825 Old Fort Parkway, which is the Lowe's Home Center here in Murfreesboro. If you look on the overhead, uh, there is the trailer as it uh, sat there in May of 2009 in their aerial photograph. Uh, this is the old Chicago pizzeria, and this is the Wendy's. Uh, and so it's at the very, uh, it's the very north end of the uh, Lowe's parking lot. Uh, we have not received any complaints about the trailer being located at this, uh, at this particular area of the parking lot, and uh, uh, it appears to be well used from the, uh, from the uh, materials that Ms. Khalifa has, has presented to us. It also appears to meet all of the minimum requirements except for the, uh, the length of the trailer. And uh, if the board approves the uh, special use permit request, staff recommends uh, both of the same conditions that the previous request was uh, made subject to. And just as, as with the uh, last request, uh, this item should be taken in two separate motions. And I'll be happy to answer any questions that you may have. All right, thank you, Mr. Blum. Any questions for Mr. Blum? Right, Ms. Cleefe, anything you'd like to add to this one? Okay. Uh, at this time, we'll go ahead and conduct a public hearing. Anyone present wishing to speak for or against this application, if you would, please come forward. And seeing none, we'll declare the public hearing closed and open the floor for any further discussion or motion on the special use permit request. Mr. Chairman, I'll make a motion to approve the special use permit subject to the staff comments. Second. Motion in a second. Uh, any further discussion? If not, all in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? All right, we'll move on to the variance request. Chairman Rogers, I'll make a motion that we approve the variance request subject to staff comments. Second. A motion in a second. Any further discussion? If not, all in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? All right, Ms. Cleaver, the application then as to the uh, location at uh, 1825 Old Fort Parkway has been approved. We will now consider the uh, uh, last application from Goodwill, application Z10028 by Ms. Jennifer Khalifa for Goodwill Industries in Middle Tennessee, requesting a special use permit in order to operate a temporary mobile recycling center in a commercial highway zone. Uh, this is for property located at 3060 South Church Street. The applicant is also requesting an eight-foot variance to the requirement that no receptacle shall exceed 40 feet in length. And finally, the applicant is requesting a 250-foot variance to the requirement that no receptacle should be located closer than 300 feet from residentially zoned property. Mr. Bobley. Thank you, Chairman Rogers. This is the second year that we've seen this particular application. Uh, uh, last May was the first time that uh, Ms. Khalifa had, had made a request for this location. This is the Food Lion Shopping Center, which is at the uh, southwest corner of South Church Street and Barfield Crescent Road. Uh, Ms. Khalifa and the, uh, the owner of the shopping center had, uh, had worked out a location on the site, but it did not meet the minimum 300-foot distance requirement from residentially zoned property. And what I'll show you now is this is the actual trailer as it was located after its approval last year. And this parcel here, which is which consists of the Barfield Commons uh, residential condominium development, is approximately 50 to 60 feet away from the location of that receptacle. Uh, and it is zoned RM16, which is a residential zoning classification. Hence the reason for the, uh, the variance request to that minimum distance requirement. Uh, if you recall, last year that was that variance request was approved, um, and uh, uh, I'm happy to report back to the board that uh, 
in the last year we have had no complaints from the uh, residents of Barfield Commons with regards to that uh, donation trailer. Uh, Goodwill does do a very good job of, of keeping their donation trailers and the area around it in, in, uh, in good shape and the, uh, and the uh, staff is always friendly and courteous and, uh, and, and appears to do a very good job of, of, of keeping the, uh, the donation areas looking, looking their best. Um, and we did a pretty good job uh, both this year and last year in sending notices out to uh, a good deal of the condominium owners and residents in the Barfield Commons uh, condominium development. Uh, uh, received maybe one or two calls from the residents after they got the, uh, the notice and upon finding out that they were uh, that, the that the request was just a continuation of what was there already. Uh, the, the callers did not seem to have a problem with it. So, uh, just based on my own observations, that uh, that was quite a large variance request. But the end result is that there appears to have been no uh, negative impact on the adjacent uh, residential community. Uh, with that being said, this site will operate much like the uh, the other two sites that uh, that Goodwill has been operating in Murfreesboro for a number of years, and that were just approved on the agenda. Uh, they're asking for the special use permit and for the uh, two variance requests, and those requests will need to be taken in three separate motions this time. Uh, if the board has any questions, I'll be happy to answer them. Uh, Ms. Khalifa is also in attendance, and the two same conditions that uh, staff has recommended in the previous two applications, uh, we are recommending in this application as well. All right, thank you, Mr. Bomley. Any questions for Mr. Bomley? Real quickly, Mr. Bomley, I can't remember. We may have discussed some buffering screening but we didn't require any when we approved this last year right no sir we did not so, right. miss click anything you'd like to add to this application okay then at this time we'll go ahead and conduct a public hearing anyone present wishing to speak for or against this application if you would please come forward and seeing them will declare the public hearing closed and open the floor for any further uh, discussions or a motion and I guess we'll take the uh, special use permit request first so move second with the conditions set by the staff okay one second uh, we have motion for approval um, and a second any further discussion all in favor say aye aye, aye. any opposed all right oh, that Part of it is granted. We'll move on now to the variance request for the uh, trailer itself, the length of the trailer. Chairman Rogers, I make a motion that we approve the eight foot variance uh, subject to staff comments. Second. I have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? If not, all in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? All right, and then lastly, we'll take the uh, uh, variance request for the uh, 250 feet to closer to residentially zoned property. I'll move approval of the 250 foot variance, uh, Mr. Chairman, subject to staff comments. Second. A motion and a second. Any further discussion? If not, all in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? All right, Ms. Cleaver, that application has been granted as well. All three have been approved. We appreciate you coming in today. Thank you. Good to see you again. <coughs> All right, so we'll move on now to application Z10029 by Ms. Julie Smith for Absolute Fireworks, requesting a special use permit in order to operate a temporary outdoor vending establishment, a seasonal fireworks retailer, and a commercial highway zone for property located at 131 Cason Lane. The applicant is also requesting a 6% variance to the requirement that the parking spaces displaced by a temporary vendor on the site of an existing permanent business will not total more than 25% of the total parking available on site. Mr. Longley, if you'd review that report, please. Yes, sir. Thank you, Chairman Rogers. Uh, this is the, I believe, the fifth time that, uh, that Ms. Smith has made an application for this location. It's the Duds and Suds on Cason Lane, just south of the intersection of Cason Lane and River Rock Boulevard. And I'll show you an aerial photograph of the property. Here's the Duds and Suds building. And just to the north of it is the uh, Pinnacle Bank. And just across the street is the, the Rutherford Bank and Trust, I believe. And then just to the south of it is a car wash. And it backs up to the, uh, uh, to the um, hair salon located off of River Rock Boulevard. 
Uh, Ms. Smith is making application for the uh, July 4th selling season only. Um, she is proposing a 30 by 45 tent, which is the same size that she has used in years past. Uh, because of the size of the parking lot, uh, she does not meet the uh, the maximum 25 percent, um, or the the maximum 25 percent of the parking lot that she can take up as a temporary vendor. So for the last several years, she's made a request for a variance to that provision, and that provision's only been in the zoning ordinance for about two or three years. So each year after that was adopted, she has made application for and been approved for the same uh, variance to the amount of parking that she can uh, take up. Uh, and this will be. Uh, this request will be uh, mitigated a little bit by the fact that uh, this year the hotspot tanning salon, which was the second tenant in the building with duds and suds, is no longer open and that's just a vacant tenant space. So if that stays vacant through the July 4th selling season, uh, there will be a lot less of a, de of a demand for parking at the, uh, at the shopping center um, or at the, uh, at the building. So the applicant is requesting that uh, that parking variance, and she's also requesting the special use permit. Uh, the manner in which she will be operating will be identical to in years past. Um, uh, tense hours of operation will be from 10 a.m. until 10 p.m., uh, with the exception of July 4th, during which time the tent will be open until midnight. Uh, and we're not aware of any complaints regarding the site's operation in years past. Uh, the site did pass its initial codes and zoning inspections. And one of the things you'll notice in the staff comments was that at the time of the writing of the staff comments, she did not have uh, yet, yet have written permission from the uh, property owner for the use of the restrooms at the Duds and Suds. She has since provided that uh, written permission from Mr. Walker, who, uh, who owns that property. Uh, the uh, location appears to meet all of the other criteria set forth in the zoning ordinance. Uh, if, the board, if the board approves the special use permit request, staff recommends the following conditions and the standard seven, I'll just go over this just, just this once. Uh, certification should be submitted that the tent is flame resistant or treated to be flame resistant. A fire extinguisher should be kept on site at all times. Uh, Y'all probably have these memorized by now, don't you? <laughs> <laughs> uh, the city's fireworks ordinance should be posted on site. No fireworks are to be set off on site. All signage must comply with the city sign ordinance. The site must pass an electrical safety inspection prior to opening for business. An electrical permit must be purchased from the Building and Codes Department in order to obtain this inspection. And finally, the tent must meet all minimum building setback requirements for the CH Zoning District, and a tent permit must be obtained for the tent. Uh, and the special use permit and variance requests will need to be taken in separate motions. Uh, I'll be happy to answer any questions that you may have before or after the public hearing, and Ms. Smith is in attendance, uh, as you can see, uh, if, you, if you have any questions for her. All right. Thank you, Mr. Blomley. Any questions for Mr. Blomley? Ms. Smith, anything you'd like to add to the application? <laughs> All right. Uh, then at this time, we'll go ahead and conduct a public hearing. Anyone present wishing to speak for or against this application, if you would please come forward. And seeing none, we'll declare the public hearing closed and open the floor for further discussions uh, or a motion. And we'll take the special use permit request first. Chairman, I move approval of the special use permit subject to staff comments. Second. Motion in the second. Any further discussion? If not, all in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? All right. Uh, we'll now consider the request for the 6% variance to the requirement that the parking space is displaced uh, not exceed 25% of the total parking available. I make a motion uh, to approve the 6% variance with uh, subject to the comments of the staff. Second. I have a motion in two seconds. <laughs> That's a four. <laughs> okay. All right. I have a motion in a second. Any further discussion? If not, all in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? All right. Uh, Ms. Smith, those, that application then has been granted in its entirety. I believe you're sticking around for some more firework. More at least, fire. uh, yeah, more firework. <laughs> 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 We'll now move on to special use permit requests. Uh, application Z10030 by Ms. Deborah Richardson, requesting a special use permit in order to conduct a home occupation, which would be a therapist's office, at her residence located at 2011 Sulphur Springs Road. The property is located in a residential single family RS10 zone. 
Mr. Baum, if you'd review that for us, please. Yes, sir. Thank you, Chairman Rogers. The subject property is located at 2011 Sulphur Springs Road, which is at the southwest corner of Sulphur Springs Road and Ravenwood Drive. Uh, I'll show you on the aerial photograph right now. Uh, the property is zoned RS10, and as you can see, uh, all around it, it's, it's and there's the property right there. It's surrounded entirely by uh, single-family residential zoning um, and single-family residential uses. Um, it's a single-family residence on the subject property. The applicant would like to conduct a home-based business, and home-based businesses that have customer traffic coming to and from them require a special use permit from our Board of Zoning Appeals. So she submitted uh, paperwork uh, uh, addressing the standards in Section 9 of our zoning ordinance dealing with home-based businesses. And uh, just to give you some background on, on uh, what she will be doing, she is a uh, licensed uh, psychotherapist and uh, she will be treating individuals and uh, uh, couples and families and, uh, and children as well at her home. And she has uh, uh, volunteered to have a maximum of eight appointments per day, none of which would be overlapping and none of which would uh, last past 6 p.m. at night. As I mentioned, uh, visits will be by appointments only. Uh, there will be no group therapy sessions for individuals that are unrelated. So the only uh, instances where there will be therapy for more than one person at a time will be for families and couples. Uh, days of operation will be Monday through Saturday. Appointments will begin no earlier than 8 a.m. on weekdays and 10 a.m. on Saturdays. And therapy sessions will cease no later than 6 p.m. on uh, weekdays and 1 p.m. on Saturdays. Uh, the zoning ordinance dictates that no more than 25% of the area of the dwelling unit uh, can be devoted to the home occupation. Uh, Ms. Richardson intends to enclose her existing garage and uh, which is 361 square feet or 19.4 percent of the uh, of the overall square footage of the house and she intends to use that as her uh, as her therapy office uh, the majority of that would be an open area which will actually double as kind of a family room um, uh, during non-business hours but it will be a where she conducts her uh, her uh, her therapy sessions and and does her does her uh, uh, business activities there and there also be a small foyer as you uh, enter what's now the garage and there'll be a storage room as well so it'll be a three three room uh, office but will be primarily open for the uh, or open as far as the uh, having the therapy room there she is requesting a six inch by 12 inch sign on the new door facing Ravenwood Drive and the access into the uh, uh, garage. The garage faces Ravenwood Drive, and the driveway comes in off of Ravenwood Drive, and not uh, Sulphur Springs Road. As you can see on the uh, on the drawing here, here's Sulphur Springs Road, and here is Ravenwood Drive. Uh, her garage is currently here, facing Ravenwood Drive, and uh, uh, so this is the area that would be converted into her uh, into her uh, therapist's office. The small six-inch by 12-inch sign on the new door facing Ravenwood Drive will read uh, Deborah Richardson, comma, MSSW, comma, LCSW. Uh, and as I mentioned, driveway access, we can go back to the overhead, is from Ravenwood Drive. Her current driveway will hold four vehicles. Uh, she said that presently her family has two vehicles there at the residence, uh, one of which will not be there uh, very frequently during the daytime hours when she'll be seeing her patients. But she does, at any rate, propose to expand the driveway to accommodate a fifth vehicle with a little bump out here. Uh, so uh, since, uh, since there will be only be one appointment at a time and no overlapping vehicle or no overlapping appointments, the amount of vehicles that will be accommodated by the driveway uh, should be sufficient and there should be no overflow parking into the street as a result of this home-based business. Uh, one thing that I would uh, mention is that uh, is that she does conduct, or she does intend to conduct some of her therapy sessions outdoors, uh, especially the ones that she will be uh, conducting with children. Um, she's indicated to me that the best way to uh, to uh, get children to open up is with uh, sessions in which they are actually active, and so she'll have uh, some sandbox therapy and painting therapy, uh, which will um, 
those activities outdoors will help to assist her in, um, in conducting her therapy sessions. Uh, just to go over a few of the other improvements that she is looking to do, um, you'll see here I have drawn on a, a, a addition to her fence. She's looking to expand the fenced-in area around her house. Uh, currently, the fenced-in area is just this small area here, and she wishes to have a little bit more room uh, to conduct those, those therapy sessions outdoors. And uh, so expanding that fenced-in area, she's looking to go all the way to the western property line and all the way to the southern property line. But she doesn't intend to bring that fence out any closer to either street than the, uh, than the existing house. Uh, she also intends to plant some additional some additional vegetation along both Ravenwood Drive and along uh, her western property line to add a little bit more uh, privacy for her neighbors and for herself. Um, and uh, so one of the conditions that staff recommends is that is that uh, that will be subject to the approval. The location of those plantings will be subject to the approval of the city traffic engineer to make sure that none of those plantings are located within the site distance triangle uh, for any of the ad adjacent driveways to make sure it's safe. Uh, if the board approves this request, staff recommends the following conditions. Um, as I mentioned, all landscaping along Ravenwood Drive must be planted outside of the traffic site distance triangle, subject to the approval of the city traffic engineer. Uh, building permits must be obtained for the conversion of the garage into office space, as well as for the relocation of the fence. A signed permit, if needed, shall also be obtained from the building and codes department. Number three, there should be no overlapping appointments. And this is just uh, making a, a condition something that the uh, applicant has already committed to. Uh, and number four, all sessions shall end no later than 6 p.m. on weekdays. And number five, there shall be a maximum of eight appointments per business day. Uh, with that being said, I'll be happy to answer any questions that the board may have. Ms. Richardson is in, in attendance as well to answer any questions that you may have for her. All right, thank you, Mr. Bomley. Uh, any questions for Mr. Bomley? I, I have one. Is the a, a sign or the sign a requirement of her license to have a sign? That's a good question, and I, and I do not know that. That's she may be able to answer that for us. No. Miss Miss Richardson, if you wouldn't mind just coming up to the podium. And I neglected to show you the uh, the photographs that I took. I'll show those to you real quick while we're waiting. This is the driveway from uh, this photograph taken from Ravenwood Drive. That's the garage door that will be removed, and that that will of course become the uh, the home office. This is looking at the uh, current location of the fence, and as you can see, the area that's fenced in is much smaller right now than than the applicant would like to have it. This is the front of the property as it faces Sulphur Springs Road. Now just some shots of the surrounding neighborhood. This is the house located directly to the south. the house directly across Sulphur Springs Road. This is across Ravenwood Drive. There is. Looking down Ravenwood Drive, and now you know why I wanted to show the pictures to you. <laughs> That's a beautiful car right there. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's sparkling in the in the spring air. It's a that's a running joke. <laughs> it's not my car. No, it's, <laughs> she wouldn't claim it. Did, did she have to say that so emphatically? I don't. Yeah. Yeah. You notice she didn't say that's mine. <laughs> oh, 
own that. The same reaction. <laughs> <laughs> I think anybody would be lucky to own that vehicle. <laughs> All right, and that's that's the house directly uh, behind her house to the west. Ms. Michael. <laughs> All right, here's Ms. Richardson. Yes, about the my name being displayed on the outside. It isn't necessary. Um, I could just make some sort of a special, you know, door, uh, uh, what am I looking for? Just some, something decorative for the doors. A lot of families put on their doors and put Richardson, it would sell, serve the same purpose. Because I have the um, address of my home and the name Richardson on the mailbox anyhow. So I don't think that's going to be a matter. What I have to display on the inside of my office is my license. So. Ms. Richardson, I think one of the one of the main reasons they were asking is because the uh, you know, sometimes we'll have uh, real estate agents come through and request a home-based business, and the state uh, requires that they have a small sign identifying their their office, even if it's a home-based office. So I think they were curious if the if the board that licenses you by the state as well requires the same thing? No. Thank you. Um, all right, any other questions for Ms. Richardson? Right, thank you, Ann. Uh, Matthew, I've got a question about the staff comments. One of the, number four is all sessions shall end no later than 6 p.m. on weekdays. Number five is there should be a maximum of eight appointments per business day. And then number three, of course, no overlapping appointments. That is part of the application, so I'm curious why did you include those particular ones? Because there's some other things in here that, that I think are important, that appointments should be in no earlier than 8 a.m. Uh, on weekdays and 10 a.m. on Saturdays, and that, that therapy sessions shall cease by 1 p.m. on Saturdays. Why weren't those included in the staff comments? I guess I just uh, kind of following the lead of some of the past meetings that we've had with uh, for home-based businesses, where some of the things that have been recurring themes have been uh, uh, appointments no later than a certain time, uh, maximum number of appointments, and no overlapping appointments, so as to limit traffic to a uh, uh, you know a certain number of vehicles at one time. Let's say we just approved the application based on staff comment number one and number two. Isn't the fact, though, that, 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 that the hours of operation are part of the application or isn't, and, and it's approved that way, isn't, go, isn't that going to be the case then? I mean, you, we don't have to include that in staff comments, do we? You don't have to. It's just more of a belt and suspenders oh, approach. approach. Okay. Okay. I, I, I would hate to, I, I, what I would want, not want to do is single out some of the requirements and, and not mention the other requirements. It makes it look like then, well, we're, we're just approving some of them, but not all of them. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. I, I think regardless, it, it would be approved as, as, she, as she has stated in her application. Uh, yeah, I guess I was just trying to single out the things that had seemed to have been uh, uh, important points of interest in previous meetings and just kind of kind of uh, not codifying them but but uh, kind of spelling them out specifically in the uh, in the motion that's entirely up to y'all how y'all want to okay all right um, at this time we'll go ahead and conduct a public hearing anyone present wishing to speak for or against this application if you would please come forward and seeing none, we'll declare the public hearing closed and open the floor for any further discussions or motion. Uh, Chairman Rogers, I just have one comment. I think if there's any way to um, I guess limit the uh, uh, the thought process that, process that there's a business going on in a residential area to the neighbors, that that's what I would be for. I don't necessarily have any problem with the application in and of itself, but if there's no need for a sign uh, or there's no requirement on her behalf from a licensure standpoint, uh, I would be inclined to do away with the sign altogether. Uh, uh, just my opinion. Well, if there's no further 
comments, then I will make a motion that we um, approve this application subject to not only staff comments but the entire application with the removal of the sign. I'll second. All right, we have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? If not, all in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? All right, Ms. Ms. Richardson, that application has been approved. Thank you very much. I'll move on now to application Z10031 by Ms. Julie Smith for Absolute Fireworks, requesting a special use permit in order to operate a temporary outdoor vending establishment, a seasonal fireworks retailer, in a commercial local zone for property located at 3216 Memorial Boulevard. Ms. Blomley. Rogers. Um, this is the second year that Ms. Smith has made application for this property. It's the old location where there used to be a motel there. I forget what the name of it was, but it burned down uh, a couple of years ago. And if we could get that on the overhead. See here, this is the 2009 aerial photography. You can tell that the uh, motel is no longer there, uh, but the paved parking area for the motel is, and the paved parking area is where uh, Ms. Smith was uh, approved for last year and uh, where she uh, set up for the uh, for the July 4th season last year. And this year she is requesting the uh, July 4th season as well. Uh, just to give you a little bit better bearing on where this is, this is just to the north of Cedarview Drive. Uh, this is the Shell Station, which, locate, which is located on the northeast corner of the uh, of Memorial Boulevard and Cedarview Drive. Sir Pizza is basically across the street from where the motel used to be, and there is a small mobile home park uh, directly to the rear and to the east of the subject property. And that uh, entrance off to the mobile home park is off of uh, Cedarview Drive. Here's the applicant's site plan. As you can see, it's going to be a uh, 30 by uh, 45 tent, same as it was last year. Uh, there's ample parking on site because there's no use on site anymore since the motel is, uh, is no longer there. And uh, there's one entrance off of Memorial Boulevard. Uh, we did not receive any, any complaints about the site last year about parking or ingress or egress. Uh, she'll be operating the site in an identical fashion uh, to the uh, to the, uh, up to, the, to the way the site was operated last year. Uh, one thing that you may recall is, is she's over the minimum 200 feet from the gas pumps. There's the Shell Station right next door, and I believe uh, she is, not by much, but she's about uh, 220 or so from that nearest gas pump at, uh, at the Shell Station to the south. Uh, as I mentioned, this is just for the July 4th selling season. Uh, the uh, requested conditions of approval are the same except for with one additional condition. Uh, a physical barricade must be erected along the eastern edge of the parking lot, which is here, where the, until this is, this is a dated photograph because the motel is still there. But now there's a pretty steep drop off uh, from the edge of the parking lot. And so we will need to have a, a physical barricade to make sure that uh, vehicles know where to stop so that they don't, that the nose of those vehicles doesn't go down the embankment. Uh, and a barricade also on the northern side of the uh, large island that is in the middle of the parking lot because uh, while the other three sides of that island are curbed, that northern side of the island is uh, not curbed. And so we don't want vehicles parking on the grass at that location. So uh, if approved, staff recommends the standard seven conditions as well as that eighth condition as well. Uh, and if the board has any questions, I'll be happy to answer them. And Ms. Smith is here if you have any questions for her. All right. Thank you, Mr. Blomley. Any questions for Mr. Blomley? All right. Ms. Smith, anything you'd like to add to this application? Okay. At this time, we'll go ahead and conduct a public hearing. Anyone present wishing to speak for or against this application, if you would please come forward. Seeing none, we'll declare the public hearing closed and open the floor for any further discussions or motions. Mr. Chairman, I'll make a motion that we approve the application subject to the staff comments. Thank you. Yes, I have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? If not, all in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? All right. Ms. Smith, that application has been granted as well. 
Thank you. Appreciate you coming in today. Guess we'll see you next year. Right. <laughs> next will be application Z10032 by Mr. Jeff Breeden for the Riverdale High School Softball Booster Club requesting a special use permit in order to operate a temporary outdoor vending establishment, a seasonal fireworks retailer in a light industrial zone. This is for property located at 2030 South Church Street. Mr. Bonley. Thank you, Chairman Rogers. Uh, as you can see, Mr. Breeden is here and uh, he has told me that his Riverdale High School softball team was victorious today in their, in their uh, sprinkling game. Uh, this is the second year that this site has been requested for a special use permit for temporary vending for a seasonal fireworks retailer. Uh, the applicant is requesting both the uh, July 4th and New Year's selling seasons. Uh, this is the site of the old fireworks supermarket that burned down several years ago. Uh, last year there was a different applicant, however, uh, who represented the property owner. This year, uh, Mr. Breeden is actually the applicant on behalf of the Riverdale High School softball team and they are actually leasing the property from the uh, from last year's applicant who uh, who owns the property uh, the uh, site is as I mentioned on the site of the old fireworks supermarket location here's a 2009 aerial photo photograph that shows its location of course there's the building is no longer there in this photograph the parking lot in front of it is a paved parking lot so it meets our minimum standards for a hard dustless surface to the north is the uh, is the uh, Exxon on the run. The tent will meet the minimum separation requirements. And to the south is the uh, Knights Inn, which is to the south and to the uh, west of the subject property. All of that area is zoned LI light industrial. The size of the tent will be 60 by 80. You see here is where it'll be located on site. You'll have to meet the minimum 10 foot setback requirement off the southern property line and a minimum 42 foot setback uh, requirement off of the, uh, the front property line. Uh, some differences from last year's application. Uh, the applicant in order to handle solid waste will be having a uh, 10 by 40 dumpster moved in just to the north of the tent. And there will also be a, an RV parked over here on the northern end of the parking lot for uh, for overnight security and for uh, for the uh, uh, team and the and, and the uh, operators of the tent to uh, to use to take breaks and and whatnot there as well. As I mentioned, the applicant is making a request for both the July Fourth and New Year's selling seasons. Uh, the applicant proposes to. Uh, have his hours of operation be from 8 a.m. until 11 p.m. with the exception of July 3rd and 4th and December 31st, which, during which time the tent will be open until midnight. Uh, the site passed its initial zoning inspection uh, and did fail its initial codes inspection, but since then the, uh, the uh, site has passed its codes property maintenance inspection and is in good shape now. Uh, with that being said, the, the site will be uh, operated almost in an identical fashion to, uh, to last year's uh, with the exception of the few changes that, uh, that I went over a moment ago. If the board approves this application, staff recommends the standard seven conditions and an eighth condition that a temporary barrier must be installed during the selling season along the uh, edge of the area that has been seeded and strawed where the building used to be so that there is no vehicular travel or parking on this grass area. And I'll show you now where I'm talking about would be this area here along the edge of where the building used to be. Uh, and the previous applicant had addressed that comment last year and that was a, one of the conditions of approval by, uh, by installing a silt fence at the edge of that, uh, at the edge of that, uh, that sodded area. And I believe the applicant intends to do the same thing uh, this year if, it, if he has not done so already. With that being said, I'll be happy to answer any questions and Mr. Breeden is here if you have any questions for him. All right. Thank you, Mr. Blomley. Any questions for Mr. Blomley? Do we get any complaints last year on parking there or anything? No, no. There were several things that were that were different from the approval last year that uh, we had to work with the applicant last year and and uh, and that we approved some of those differences administratively. Uh, but as far as complaints from the public, no, we did we did not have any complaints last year.
Coach Breed, anything you'd like to add to the application? Okay. At this time, we'll go ahead and conduct a public hearing. Anyone present wishing to speak for or against this application, if you would, please come forward. Seeing none, we'll declare the public hearing closed and open the floor for any further discussions or motion. Mr. Chairman, I'll make a motion that we approve the application uh, subject to the eight conditions recommended by the staff. Second. I have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? If not, all in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? All right. Coach, that application has been granted. Appreciate it. Congratulations today. Thank you. And uh, best best of luck as y'all go forward. What round are we in now? We are in the uh, <clears throat> winner's bracket finals tomorrow night at 7. So we're in good shape. We're no less than, I mean, third is the worst we can finish now. So. Fantastic. Right. And so where do you play tomorrow night? At Starplex. Starplex. Okay. All right. Good luck. Thanks. Mm -hmm. All right, uh, we'll now consider application Z10033 by Mr. Josh McNeil for Team G Fireworks requesting a special use permit in order to operate a temporary outdoor vending establishment, a seasonal fireworks retailer, and a commercial highway zone, and this is for property located at 125 John R. Rice Boulevard. Mr. Bob, if you'd review that one for us, please. Yes, sir. Thank you, Chairman Rogers. Uh, this is a location that has been approved by the Board of Zoning Appeals. Uh, since 1997, with just the exception of uh, 2004, in which an application was was not made for this location, but uh, the applicant TNT Fireworks is proposing to operate this tent in the uh, in the same fashion that it has in, in years past. And uh, one of the things that I always have to commend TNT on is their uh, very timely cleanup schedule and uh, always. Uh, very good as far as getting things cleaned up in a timely manner after the selling season ends, and they're always uh, very thorough in their cleanup as well. Uh, as I mentioned, they're just making an application for the July 4th selling season. Uh, the hours of operation will be from 10 a.m. until 10 p.m., with the exception of July 3rd and 4th, during which time the tent will be open until midnight. Uh, we're not aware of any complaints that have been filed with regards to this location in years past. The site's passed its initial inspections. The size of the tent will be 40 by 60, as it has in years past. Uh, and uh, it appears to meet all of the other requirements set forth for uh, seasonal fireworks retailers in the, uh, in the zoning ordinance. Uh, I'll show you the uh, aerial photograph here. This is the front of the Sam's Club building here as it faces John R. Rice Boulevard. That's the, uh, the fuel center. The tent is always located in this corner of the parking lot here, which is uh, kind of removed from the uh, the front of the building, the entrance to the building, and uh, never seems to pose any problem with regards to uh, to parking on site. It's a very large parking lot to begin with. Uh, with that being said, I'll be happy to answer any questions before or after the public hearing. And Mr. McNeil, and this is his first year with us uh, representing uh, TNT before the Board of Zoning Appeals, is happy to answer any questions as well. Thank you, Mr. Bomley. Any questions for Mr. Bomley? Mr. McNeil, anything you'd like to add to the application? Yes, and at this time, we'll go ahead and conduct a public hearing. Anyone present wishing to speak for or against this application, if you would, please come forward. And seeing none, we'll declare the public hearing closed and open the floor for any further discussions or motion. Mr. Chairman, I'll move for approval of the special use permit subject to staff comment. Second. Motion and a second. Any further discussion? If not, all in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? All right, Mr. McNeil, the application then for 125 John R. Rice Boulevard has been approved. I uh, will now consider the application for uh, the location of 2000 Old Fort Parkway. Application Z10034 by Mr. Josh McNeil for TNT Fireworks, requesting a special use permit in order to operate a temporary outdoor vending establishment, which is a seasonal, seasonal fireworks retailer, in a commercial highway zone. Uh, for, again, property located at 2000 Old Fort Parkway. Mr. Blomley. Thank you, Mr. Rogers. Uh, our final application today is, as, as you mentioned, at 2000 Old Fort Parkway, which is the Old Fort Parkway uh, Walmart Supercenter. Uh, and this site has been approved for a temporary vending location for a seasonal fireworks retailer uh, ever since 1996. Uh, I'm not aware of any complaints that we've received at the, with regards to this location. Uh, and the applicant intends to, to operate it in, a, in an identical fashion to in years past. 
Um, the site did pass its initial inspections. Uh, hours of operation will be the same for, as, for this one as it was for their previous location. Uh, the size of this proposed tent is 40 by 60, and it will be located in this area of the parking lot here, which is directly across the street from a uh, small strip center on James Lusinski Drive that uh, houses a, a Greek restaurant and uh, a consignment store it's just to the north of the Baskin Robbins there on the on James Lusinski. The tent will be in this area here, which, as you know, that's a that's a very large parking lot, and uh, we've never had any complaints with regards to uh, interfering with the parking at at Walmart. It meets all of the other requirements in our zoning ordinance. And with that being said, I'll be happy to answer any questions. We recommend the standard seven conditions for this request. And Mr. McNeil is here if you have any questions for him. Thank you, Mr. Bomley. Any questions for Mr. Bomley? Mr. McNeil, anything you'd like to add to this application? And at this time, we'll conduct a public hearing. Anyone present wishing to speak for or against the application, if you would, please come forward. And seeing none, we'll declare the public hearing closed and open the floor for any further discussion or motion. Chairman Rogers, I make a motion that we approve the special use permit subject to all staff comments. Second. Right, we have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? If not, all in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? All right, Mr. McNeil, that application has been granted as well. Appreciate you coming in today. Thank you. All right. Uh, next item on the agenda, staff reports and other business. Of which I have none today. Well, so do I. Easy. <laughs> <laughs> There's no other business, and we are adjourned.